Ok. Alors, je vais être plus court et moins technique que la plupart des autres intervenants. Hein. Euh, sorry. I will be uh, shorter and uh, less technical than uh, other participants uh, or the speaker because uh, I want to, uh, I have many things to do last uh, day, so I don't have time to, to do something very complex. So uh, I will talk about uh, Okaman in Debian um, and uh, um, I will try to take an historic point, an historical point of view and um, to define the, what issues we have encountered and what we have solved and solved and what we do not have yet a solution for it. And I will finish by um, uh, something more large about something larger about uh, about other distribution and uh, source distribution. So uh, Debian is a new Linux distribution. It's a binary distribution. It was created uh, something like uh, 15 years ago. Um, it is recognized uh, among uh, Linux distribution for its package management system. It's APT, which is good, very good. Uh, but it's also uh, really recognized for uh, something like very strict policy about what you should put in Debian and what you should not put in Debian and the way you should put in Debian and it's very complicated and most of the time I, I see that Xavier is smiling because I think we, we are in, 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 the, in 2000, uh, we just come with, with hey, you know, your, your copyright is not good, your copyright is not good. And I think Van Luther has told you that a lot of time. <laughs> so, um, so yes, we, we are very, uh, Comme on dit en français, on est un peu chiant sur les licences. And we we want to to stay as this because we think it's very good and we like that in fact because it also generates. But you you don't have this kind of thing. It also generates big flameware about whether uh, Mozilla public license is uh, DFS free or not, or etc, etc. It's really great. <laughs> okay, and uh, we can also a strict recruitment for Debian developer. Uh, this point is very important because it's not about testing people. It's about uh, being able to speak with uh, other people, uh, with other Debian developer, and knowing that they have basic knowledge about what we are talking about. Uh, and this, this point is very, very important. And a central repository. This point is also really important because a central repository is a way to do great things. And in particular, it al allows QA management to, to do a lot of tests uh, against our archive, our archive, and to, to get a lot of results concerning the possibility of rebuilding packages from scratch for every situation. And it gives us uh, a lot of back background knowledge about how uh, our package interacts with the rest of the of packages. And for example, we've got few parts on things like that, which are great to use few parts, for example, uh, try to understand what uh, files are left if you install and deinstall the package. If you, it does. A, we, we we do. We always do a lot of tests concerning this kind of thing. And those people that spend days and days uh, rebuilding the whole arch uh, the whole archive just to see if everything is fine. And uh, for for your information, um, if we've got a problem, we've got the FTBFS fake to break from code source. It's the highest level, the highest possible level of criti critical bug in Debian. Um, uh, I think yes, Ralph is, uh, is a Debian developer and uh, he's really got uh, more experience than me. But uh, <laughs> let's see if I can do it uh, as good as you should have done. Okay. Um, just a quick how to make a Debian package, just to know what uh, we are talking about. Um, we always start with Christian upstream source. Upstream, upstream is the, the guy who creates 
the software we are packaging. So um, we store the, the tarball. Uh, we always have a tarball of the upstream source. It should be clean. Uh, in other words, uh, there should there's nothing should have been changed between the the, the pristine upstream source and uh, the the file in the uh, the I mean the the tarball. Um, except for a problem with uh, DFSJ compliance. Uh, DFSJ is for Debian Free Software Guideline. If there is a problem, if there are some files in, uh, in the table that we cannot distribute. Uh, we've got exact example of, of this uh, with MLDonkey. Uh, MLDonkey uh, is a file sh a peer to peer file sharing application, file sharing yes. application uh, which is a great application, but some files in it um, has been deassembled from uh, Windows binaries. And when you look at the code, the C code, you see that it looks like it doesn't look like code that have been written by some human. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we cannot distribute it <laughs> because we will have problem with the real, the real author of this file. So, we have to remove this kind of file from the table we distribute in Debian. So please, uh, if anyone uh, is, uh, has ever developed some kind of file sharing protocol, and you wish to distribute it, please remove things that we cannot distribute. And just put it apart in a plugin or something like that. It will be easier for, for, for everyone. OK, and using this upstream source, we will add a Debian directory. The Debian directory will contain most of the metadata we, we add to, um, to a pristine upstream source in, a, in order to build and to integrate this, um, this software into our archive. So we've got rules, which is basically a make file. Um, we've got control, which is simply the description of the, the build dependency. No, we will say uh, what depends on what other package we depend in order to be able to build this package. And the binary dependency when they cannot be guessed. So for example, uh, there are some um, there are some software depending on other software, but uh, the dependency is not among is not through shared libraries or thing like that. It's among it's it's through command line and uh, thing like that. So uh, we have to add uh, to the to the binary dependency uh, this kind of package. We have got changelog, which is uh, the history of the packaging of um, of the of the software. Uh, we have got a copyright. Uh, which uh, list all the licenses you and copyright order you find in the source. Uh, this file is really very, very important because this is the one which allows us to distribute the software. Because if you don't, uh, if you read the DPL and other, you, you will always have to, to say that the copyright or, or order of this software is uh, uh, Mr. X or Mr. Y. And <laughs> if, if you don't do it, it's bad. So uh, we got the copyright and it's something interesting. OK. So let's focus on OCaml. Uh, the first change log entry of OCaml is, uh, is very old. Um, uh, and it's yes, uh, version 1.02. Um, and it was uh, Christophe Lebas who did it. Um, it's strange because Christophe Lebas didn't really upload it to, to, to the archive. It was considered non-free, and I, I'm pretty sure that the real package, the real Camel package, only appeared with uh, Zenlutcher uh, in 2000, something like that. Huh? The first real upload to the archive. Um, and uh, in fact, at the time when Zenlutcher took over the maintenance of this package, uh, I think it has been really uploaded. I, before, I think it was something somewhere else. I, I don't know, Ralph, maybe you, you know better than me? No, I wasn't no. in the project at the time. Yeah. So, um, so the, the real 
birth of objective canal in Debian uh, is with then return in uh, in year 2000. Uh, now the package is maintained by, by all Debian kernel maintainer, uh, which is good and not good because um, team, maintain team maintenance is good, but uh, people tend to be less responsible of their own package and more less responsive to because when you recite when we, when we receive the bug about objective time we never know uh, who should handle it so sometimes it's uh, Zach sometimes it's uh, Julien Christo sometimes it's we, we don't know really in fact so uh, I think uh, I got problem with this but I agree on uh, that there's a, there's a good thing about team maintenance but. Sometimes uh, I'm, I'm asking myself questions. Okay, uh, so f some date. Uh, the mailing list, uh, DOM, Debian Archimel Mantner at, uh, at Debian.org has been created in 2000 by the user. Uh, the first poli policy has been written in February um, 2020, 2002. <laughs> Um, by the router and um, and uh, PKJ Camelmat, which is the IOT project uh, for team maintenance, um, has been created uh, uh, five years ago uh, by Zach and uh, Sven, in fact, I think. It was the two uh, first uh, to be uh, there. Um, here is a sort of graphics. Uh, in fact, I, I, I've counted every package we are we got in uh, in uh, PKG or Camel Mount, uh, which is uh, we have more package waiting in uh, PKG or Camel Mount than uh, there is really in Debian but uh, it's the same work uh, except that uh, we don't have yet published some some sort of some packages because uh, we don't think they are enough maintained by an upstream or something like that so sometimes they are waiting uh, here uh, to be released uh. Uh, but uh, but it's useful to have it. Um, so you see uh, the evolution of, uh, of the number of um, of packages, uh, which is a blue uh, line, uh, and the number of uh, active Debian ma maintainer. Alors I mean by active that uh, you must have done just uh, one uh, upload in one year. So it's uh, it's not very active, but it's uh, it's active. So you see that um, through the years we have been able to handle more and more package and in, pa in particular you could see an, uh, a point where we begin to, to be able to, to, to handle more and more package is here because here is the, the year we begin to work with Aliot, it's year to, uh, 2003 and uh, we begin to have uh, a more and more package at this time and uh, um, it's a little bit slowing down, but uh, I think that uh, we we have a great uh, we we are working by step because uh, every time we include a big uh, application, we include all its libraries with it. So, for example, uh, uh, we are including uh, right now a liquid soap, uh, uh, which is a big uh, application for um, webcast. Uh, podcast or web radio, something like that, huh? um, and uh, it, it got a lot of dependencies, so OCaml SSL, uh, SSL, and something like that. So, uh, so Samuel Mimram, for example, integrates a lot of uh, new packages in the in the repository, uh, and it creates uh, a new step. Uh, and uh, I think we will uh, have more and more packages. So uh, here is. Uh, <coughs> most active maintainer. Uh, this is the one uh, who have done the most, uh, who have signed the most, uh, um, how can you say, a chamber entry. Uh, so uh, as usual, there is a small group of five to six people which are doing most of the, of the work. Uh, um, and that most of these people are, are here for, for a long time. Uh, for example, uh, Stefano Zaccioli, which is uh, Zach, uh, is here since uh, since seven years. Samuel Mimram uh, and me 
since uh, five years and then uh, since uh, eight years, but he's not active anymore. And Ralph is here since uh, since eight years, yes. something Six like seven that. years. Yeah. So um, and most of the the other people just have a short period of activity. So, um, this is interesting because uh, you see that uh, we are only five, so we can do uh, a lot of work just be, being five. Um, close the issue. Uh, using a camel fine has been immediate, uh, has been natural. Uh, we, we will see, uh, we in Debian have seen that uh, we need something to organize uh, most of uh, our libraries, uh, our objective camel libraries, uh, and uh, a camel fine was a good solution. So we just take it and it was great. And we release a lot of meta files, uh, but we are trying to, to uh, push them upstream in order to have it uh, in every other uh, um, in every other distribution. Naming scheme of packages, uh, which is still an open issue, in fact, uh, since uh, one week, uh, uh, because we we have a new question about uh, whether we should put uh, a CMO into dev package or into uh, simple package. So we don't, we don't know because of uh, native bin link and uh, other dynamic li li loading of library, CMO and CMA should be in the normal package just as, uh, just as a shared object, but uh, we, uh, we don't know where we, we, we will put it uh, in the future. So it's a new uh, uh, closed issue, a new future closed issue. Uh, Abby dependency regarding OCaml package, uh, semi-closed, because uh, we still have, we, we are not really happy with it because uh, we, we are trying to find something that uh, when we change uh, the API uh, of uh, Objective Camel, we should automatically uh, generate a, a rebuild of all the package depending on uh, Objective Camel. But we don't have, we, we, are, we are beginning to be able to block dependency. This means that uh, when we upload a new Objective Camel, we block everything. This is great, and we know that uh, everything is dead since uh, we have just rebuilt uh, all the, uh, the other um, OCaml package. So we've got a solution uh, which is not great, but uh, it, it simply uh, uh, prevents uh, Objective Camel to enter testing and stable uh, without having all the OCaml library being rebuilt. So uh, at least we don't break everything, but we break in stable regularly when uh, we upload new, uh, new Objective Camel package. And team maintenance uh, through uh, IOT, uh, because uh, before we, are, we were not collaborating and uh, we have found this as a great QA tool uh, and uh, it allows us to test many things at once and to, uh, to do, uh, to do uh, maintenance at a great scale and uh, it enables to save a lot of time. Open issues, dependency between libraries, just as the ABI and dependency. In fact, you can see the ABI dependency between OCaml and the rest of the package uh, as a dependency uh, as an, uh, uh, um, an ABI dependency on, um, on pervasive, because pervasive con contains uh, MD5 uh, checksum, and uh, they are changing when we are changing uh, uh, OCaml. So uh, this is a problem. And this problem is al exists also with other, uh, with other libraries, because uh, when we rebuilt uh, object, uh, OCaml net, for example, we break every other package depending, depending on it if something has changed in, uh, in a CMI or file. And uh, we have to rebuild everything that depends on, object, on OCaml net. And uh, this is a problem. We are looking for a solution. We've got some solutions, but uh, none are new. Uh, by cut stripping, uh, because uh, OCaml interpreter stores it's uh, 
it's byte code in in debug segments, something like that. Huh? Uh, something where there should have been strict. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, you reopen yeah, so the. So this, this can affect byte code executable that we are built using the C minus minus custom. Okay, so basically by code executable that also contain a custom runtime system. And so my question is, so, so basically this is an obsolete feature, right? Uh, now that pure byte code can dynamically load uh, C plugin, uh, uh, C, C sub the library. Uh, I believe none of your packages should be using OCMLC minus custom. And so I would be interested to know what are if the packages that, that, that are still, uh, yeah. packages that, that would still run into this problem. Uh, maybe uh, we will try to help to, to, to cooperate with help Spain so that they would yeah. get rid of OCMLC minus custom. Yeah, we can uh, do that. Okay, I mean, well, I'm even willing to help if you So you, you think that, 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 that there should be no problem uh, without the, the custom file? Well, basically I think nobody should be using it these days. Uh, unless you're on a platform that doesn't have a dynamic, well, the uh, DL open uh, API or something like this, <coughs> it's definitely not the case of Linux. So, uh, okay. Uh, well, well, we can anyway, well, we can, yeah, we yeah. can keep it touch about this, yeah. but uh, no problem. So that, yeah. that might solve the problem once and for all. Yeah, right. oh. Maybe, uh, maybe it's a close issue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, since uh, something like three months. Uh, we've got three work on Arches, Native Compilation, and uh, which is uh, ES or some class, uh, ARM, uh, and uh, um, and uh, just, just Native Compilation. And uh, we found this problem uh, when compiling um, when compiling uh, Felix and uh, and uh, the other one was Camomile. Uh, which has problem because they are running their own program during the, the compilation. And uh, I'm not uh, an expert of this platform, so I, I know there's three corresponding bugs open in the, in the nice server uh, tracker of, uh, of uh, the Inria, so uh, we, we are following uh, them, we are waiting to be fixed. But I think you've got uh, a solution for the ARM uh, well, compilation. Um, I'm pretty sure, so ARM now works with uh, Debian stable. Yeah. Uh, well, the problem with ARM is that there are many different ABIs. Okay, so <coughs> so now the the one used in Debian stable works. Okay, uh, but then there are other ABIs, uh, we've been discussing this with uh, Gert at some point. Uh, there are other ABIs uh, and I'm not sure Debian supports officially yet, but uh, well, the, the situation is complicated. Yeah. And, and for those other ABIs, so yes, the uh, floating point is very different with Broker. Uh, so, yeah, well, can I ask a question in later? So, so who is still using Camel on IA64 and Alpha? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> quite quite ah, frankly, I don't. Someone here. I don't feel like we actually have time maintain, maintaining this, so I, I, I no, no longer have access to an IA64 machine. But we have Red Hat, all Red Hat the digital Unix uh, alpha uh, machines. Still Red Hat is shipping commercial programs on IA64. Red Hat is shipping an, a Camel commercial program on IA64. <laughs> Red Hat. Red Hat. <laughs> well, I mean, we we hate i64 as well, but it's well, it's not that, yeah. So, <laughs> like so <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, now uh, Debian, Red Hat, and Gurdy. Uh, what uh, I call superiority of Debian is not real superiority, in fact. Uh, I just think that we've got a lot of uh, OCaml package because we just have start early uh, and it's only for this because to my mind the build system and the package management system <coughs> doesn't cope with uh, the specificity of, uh, of, uh, of OCaml. In particular this problem of ABI uh, is something we, 
which we cannot translate into our package management system and which simply works everything. So for now, um, we don't have a real, the, the, the package system doesn't, of Debian doesn't give a, a real advance. Um, or it's just, we, we are still scratching our heads to, 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 to find solution to, to make AP, APT works with Objective Camel. Frankly, I, I don't see how we can perform some tricks like uh, the, 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 dependent, the ABI dependency between libraries. I, I don't know how we can create something which works. So uh, I'm still looking for a solution. Um, but Gaudi has a great growth, and I like Gaudi. I think it's a good distribution, source distribution, I mean, source distribution. And um, I, I, I hope that uh, we will be able to, to cooperate. I also know that the Red Hat has some solution about ABI uh, dependency. Yeah, we've, we've got a couple of scripts which we yeah. run. So I'll, I'll, I'll just get, I'll send you that. I'll send Debian a couple of Yeah, you, you have talked about this with uh, Zach, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just scripts that run a camel opt info and yeah. get the, they just kind of parse the oh output. Yeah. Unfortunately, we also have this kind of script, but... It kind of works with yeah. a little bit of adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of works. So, okay. So, uh, I hope that I will have given you some, some tips about uh, what problems Debian developers has with OCaml, because uh, it's a great language. I really like it, but packaging it is not the most easy thing I, I can uh, I can find. There, there is problems with other languages. Uh, I, I think of Python and things like that. They, they have their own problems. Uh, I'm just talking about uh, objective camel problems. Um, and we are looking for solutions. Uh, and uh, if some of you uh, as ID, uh, really uh, we would like to share it because uh, Fresh blood uh, is something essential to uh, to solve this kind of problem. Anyone has some question? Yes, I From a developer point of view, what is the advantage of using binary distribution instead of body? Uh, for you? Huh? For a developer? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you provide them? Uh, because uh, Gaudi is, uh, is a great tool uh, for um, core developer, I would say. Um, if you are uh, not, how could you say? If I if I got a machine without Debian on it, I will install Gaudi, okay, and I will uh, and I will use it. But um, for, in fact. Uh, the real advantage of Debian and uh, binary distribution uh, is for um, software and libraries. For software, you've got a lot of scripts to run before and after the installation to clean things, etc., etc., etc. And in this case, uh, for installing an LDAM key, for example, or for installing, uh, I don't know, um, for installing a Tuareg node, you need to have something more like uh, Debian, because it will touch every file in the good, uh, at, the good, uh, at the right location and uh, will integrate with the rest of the distribution. If you get something closed, uh, where you don't have to edit uh, system files, you don't really need to have objective channel in Debian for, for binary distribution doesn't have any point. Well, and also you you will uh, you will uh, save your time because uh, installing a package is something like uh, one second. Uh, compiling a package is longer. <laughs> and uh, if you uh, think about installing all the dependencies of a big package like uh, soap, liquid soap, uh, it's really more easy. Uh, and, and faster doing, uh, doing it the binary way than doing it uh, through Gurdy. But if you are fine, there's no problem. The, and of course, you, you integrate all the um, tracking of new versions through Debian and not through uh, 
Uh, well, you can also do it through garlic, of course. Yeah, but you have two of them. What we are stable or unstable or testing, and if you are unstable, you have a very old version of all the libraries. Yeah. And uh, if you are an, uh, if you are a developer and if you are unstable, maybe go is better. And uh, and uh, I, I I agree on that. <coughs> Using stable, if you are, if you are an Akamai developer, you really have uh, more. Uh, it's it's better to get uh, to get goodies and to get uh, Debian Debian libraries package of this. Uh, yes. And for for application uh, made. No in the camera, in the camera, yeah. Do you have dependencies to other camera packages? Yeah, of course. Why? Because it's really dependencies. <coughs> okay. We must be able to, uh, in Debian, we must be able to rebuild the whole distribution from source. I think Alain was uh, thinking about runtime dependency. Yeah. No, uh, runtime dependency, yeah. Uh, that's the reason why I said <coughs> we've got some, no, a lot of packages are in Debian because they are Depend real dependencies of other packages, mm -hmm. and okay. only for that. Okay. Uh, would it be possible to replace the Debian packages for a developer stuff by stuff that we call Godis install? Oh, yeah, we hope to do it one day, <laughs> but we are lucky in manpower, so <laughs> <laughs> matches so are welcome. Something that would be uh, desired. Yeah. And uh, Zach, uh, wa we were talking about it about uh, three years ago, okay. but uh, well, uh, we are really happy. Well, well <coughs> it, it would be really great, and if you get a solution to do it, uh, I, I think, uh, and uh, I don't know Ralph, but uh, I think that you will find some people to integrate it. Is there any technical problem with that? Uh, it's just a question. Of no, no, yeah, that's a technical problem, but because of naming shame, because we don't share the same name of packages, of dependencies packages, and things like that. You, you really need to, to maintain a database for corresponding packages, and we also, also need to have two states in the uh, package instead for uh, the distribution, or package instead for body, and uh, uh, a policy to upgrade uh, the package uh, if uh, you've got a new version in, uh, in Godi or if you've got a new version in Delia. So you've got a lot of things like that to, to, to cope with in order to be able to... Uh, I think you, you, should, you should not underestimate the, this question of efficiency. And maybe having a source installation can be interesting, but I think if this morning uh, the example showed during the Godi uh, demo was installing this Godi and don't remember the name of the package you, you showed and it was done in a matter of a uh, few seconds. It was quite okay. But uh, a few lines ago, I've seen that there was a package Godi cop, let's say. And I think this one was not chosen for the demo. I have taken maybe uh, at least a quarter and maybe more time yeah. for that. So uh, clearly we don't want that as a package for, let's say, if you have a Debian, there is an interest of having a binary yeah, package for at least this one. So maybe there is a trade off no, to take, you know. There, there is also many of there, there is also many other reasons. For example, I, I just don't like to say that, for example, um, uh, when Alain is talking about uh, developers and stable, uh, I, as a developer, uh, I was working with uh, Red Hat 9. Uh, and there was Fedora Core 3 at the time where I was working with Red Hat 9. Why? Because we start the project with Red Hat 9. And most of the time, uh, some people, when they <coughs> begin to develop, they want to stay in the same uh, development environment for the wood project. Because adopting new libraries is, should be long. For example, if you've got a new version of okay, Objective Canal, while you are <coughs> developing some big software, uh, just in the middle of your development, you have to spread up to new Canon Core, for example. <laughs> and <laughs> it could cost you a lot of time. <laughs> so uh, there, there, are, there are people that prefer to have something that doesn't move at all. And uh, sometimes a stable, so sometimes binary distribution stable, uh, Debian, is good for that. It means that you have two years for your project 
Could you come up more uh, about this uh, fact about ABI, uh, change in, in ABI not being uh, well uh, supported with uh, ABT or something like that? Uh, well, you you know, um, sometimes when you compile a file, you get a message about truc.cmi uh, makes inconsistent assumption, assumption about uh, another file. Okay, uh, that's because you've got uh, the CMO file important as important uh, uh, signatures of uh, of interfaces, uh, and say that it depends on these interfaces with this uh, MD5 version. Is that not easily said in a different dependency of the package? Because uh, how could you say? Because well, you could say, but because in, in fact you, you must think of package management system as something made for C uh, libraries, okay? And in C libraries you don't have the same things. You've got shared symbol and you can handle packages. And the package management system is great for shared, shared symbol. You can find in shared object uh, uh, of standard library, okay? Um, like C. Uh, 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 so. uh, but uh, the concept of, uh, of MD5 terms for your interface, your interface is not in the in shared library, okay? So you've got a gap. Because so your point is that, uh, for example, in C development, sometimes you also have changes. So your point yeah. is that with OCaml, changes occur at this release. Or is it in fact, uh, even if you, uh, for example, if uh, OCaml net changes and the OCaml SSL doesn't change, if you recompile it with a new OCaml net, its interfaces change. There is a change. It's not the same thing. The, the, the MD5 change. And uh, I think Xavier can confirm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when you've got something that change in the uh, in the in the chain, you you have to reboot everything, which is uh, after uh, this uh, this point. And it's quite complicated to manage because th most of the time you, you don't discover automatically this kind of thing. Yes. I think the big problem is that you can't add more functions or add. Yeah, you cannot signature. add. Uh, well. For example, if you add a function, even if everything is the same, just uh, the, the rest of the file is the same, you just add one function, you change. The, the signatures change. And you, you have to reboot the, the, the rest of the <coughs> Where, Whereas in C, that would be regarded as maybe an incompatible change. Yeah. Because as long as no one's using the new function, the old API is the same. Any other question? Yes? And just to come back on the um, distribution cooperation thing, maybe it might also be possible to have Godi generate Debian packages because Godi can already generate. Oh, Ryan yes. Uh, just as I say in the last, uh, in the, the last page, yes, uh, we must cooperate, yes. And uh, there's something to do uh, about uh, integrating uh, uh, the. Um, uh, Debian and Godi and uh, sharing the same pages and sharing the same, but we need time to do it and we need uh, we need good ID and uh, a good way to do it and it's not that easy. Uh, yes, just, just to comment on this, so one should not get ahead of oneself with that. Uh, in particular, this generating Debian packages from, from Godi because uh, in Debian we like to keep uh, control ourselves about exactly how Debian packages are constituted and, and built. The reason is what Sula uh, so mentioned, that we have quite strict policy which evolves. And uh, this is also one of the reasons why, for instance, we don't like it when upstream authors try to build themselves Debian yeah. built uh, directories because they mm -hmm. almost never do what we want them to do. So uh, we would like to, uh, to keep control ourselves about yeah. the construction of the, of the Debian package. However, what I could imagine very well where we could um, contribute is there is a lot of uh, work to be done by a package maintainer which is far beyond just finding the right invocation to type make uh, something and, uh, and make install. 
which is putting the package itself into the same state in which it quite often isn't. Uh, so Gerd mentioned, for instance, that uh, for Goody he uh, supposes that there is a prefix environment variable and a test year environment uh, variable in the individual system of a, of a software. If this quite often is not the case, and we have a Debian with the same problem, and in this case, what uh, maintainer has to do is he has to look into the sources and fetch the sources and fetch the make file or maybe even fetch the program. And uh, this also happens um, when, for instance, there are bugs in, uh, in the program. Bugs uh, were sometimes the upstream maintainer, maintainer just doesn't care about or doesn't, uh, doesn't respond. So in this case, we, we just have to put, just we just have to work on the software itself. And this is something uh, I think that could be shared very well between Goody and Debian and maybe mm -hmm. others. Yeah, there's, there's also software uh, which currently don't know who uh, who maintains it. For example, the MySQL bindings. I don't know who, do, who does it currently. I uh, find it out. Yeah. Yeah, for it to, to take a look at that, yes, in, uh, in Vidan, I, I've seen something quite interesting about uh, Okama libraries. Because Okama libraries just stay as is for years, and there's no bugs on it, and there's nothing. There's people using it, but there's no bugs, and there's very problematic. You've got a C library. You've got a C library. You always have bugs. So that's great, because you, you can measure the, um, the responsiveness of your upstream maintainer is you, you will keep it under workload. <laughs> <laughs> with, with Okama library, we've got a big problem because we don't, we don't have workload. So people just think that the package is not used or that nobody cares about it. But sometimes it's just because you are using it but there's no bug, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really no. <laughs> if you want to do no. some, some commercial software, I, I, I beg you, get some bug in your car. It will be better. And it will allow us to do some QA management to detect you, the bug you left. <laughs> better, really better. So, uh, so, but one of the great problems is that uh, a lot of uh, upstream author just go unresponsive because uh, because they don't have uh, any uh, return on uh, on their own software and sometimes it's a bit complicated because uh, for example I was using Edek which is a good uh, a good software but don't have a lot of bugs and uh, the screen author just uh, let the, the we can still compile it there's no problem but. I've, some, I, I've got something like uh, one which is bug, uh, but uh, nobody wants to take care about it because uh, because uh, there's not a lot of people uh, giving feedback about it. So, any other question? Would there be a way to use uh, to for Goody to ask for Debian if you want use it? I mean, you. I think you should ask. Yes, I think it's possible, but. It's it's what, um, but uh, I, I don't know. I think through finally, but we can do it. Uh, I think before trying to install or upgrade a package, you can maybe use a camera find to test if it exists on the system before using it. But I don't know if it's possible. I think, I think the, the problem is more about, uh, about uh, CLI files. Oh, yeah. OK, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't this is, this is, this is this is a big problem in uh, using body because uh, the users have to learn with this. Um, for example, if you want to uh, install the the the, the, the PCRE bindings in body and they're always <laughs> installed, you must have a PCRE in the systems and and there must be the PCRE that <coughs> package installed. Yeah. <coughs> The problem is the user must do it, but uh, Goody doesn't say or doesn't do, take any action on itself to do it, so that's a problem. Yeah. Uh, is there any other question? Because uh, I think I will let Xavier clear. Thank you.